Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie, and in this lesson tonight, we're going to be working on reading comprehension number three. So I'm very excited to start this reading comprehension exercise. And it's called the psychology of collecting. So let's get started. People collect things, all kinds of things. Collecting things dates back to prehistoric and hunter gatherer times. If people collected things in those early times, they knew that they could use it eat it, wear it, or possibly trade it at some time in the future. In modern society, all of our wants and needs, such as clothing, food, basic necessities, hygiene products, and items for entertainment are readily available to us at stores, markets, shops, and even online. So why do people continue to collect things today? I don't know. The psychology of collecting is deep. Collecting allows people to hold on to personal memories of childhood, innocence, and long lost relatives. People collect a variety of things like stamps, coins, records, hats, comic books, skateboards, spoons, marbles, shells, rocks, pins, toys, teapots, sports memorabilia, hockey and baseball cards, figurines, Christmas keepsake ornaments, jewelry, watches, clocks, art, books, wine, dolls, fridge magnets, and the list goes on. Now, I myself have a fridge magnet collection behind me, as you can see. All of those beautiful fridge magnets I collect. They used to be on my fridge, but because I spend so much time in my office, I decided to transfer them from the kitchen to my office and put them on my filing cabinets. And I'm so happy to announce that I have a new fridge magnet to add to my collection right here. Now, this beautiful little magnet was given to me by my little neighbor at the back, Millie. She was shopping with her mom one day and saw this beautiful fridge magnet and she knew that I would love to have it to add to my fridge magnet collection. So after this video, I'm going to be putting it on my cabinets so you'll be able to see it in the back of me on the next video. Isn't it beautiful? And thank you again, Millie. So let's get moving on our reading comprehension exercise. Okay, so now here you can see a picture of a, of a personal watch collection that this gentleman owns. Isn't that a beautiful watch collection? I agree. And if we move down here, we can see this lady's personal record collection. Now look how proud she looks of her record collection. She's just smiling. This beautiful, colorful lady is so proud of her record collection. If we move down a little bit, we can see an amazing collection of clocks. Look at these nice clocks that somebody is collecting. Very nice collection. Okay, so collecting means different things to different people. Many will say that they just love the thrill of the chase, the escapism, or just the social aspect of collecting and meeting and interacting with like-minded people, 
sharing stories and showing off their prized possessions, building their knowledge and making new friends. Collectors may have one or even multiple collections that they are proud of and always have a designated area in their homes to display their pride and joy. Just like in a museum, this area usually includes a multitude of shelves, special lighting, and glass display cabinets. Collecting is normally a lifelong passion, and it gives people a sense of pride, a feeling of fulfillment and purpose. It enriches their lives and gives them a sense of completion. People find this hobby to be rewarding, stimulating, and just plain fun, as well as being a long-term investment. Surprisingly enough, people that collect things have specific names. Now here's a little warning. Some of these words are difficult to pronounce and some do not appear in standard dictionaries. Another little note, words that have not been recognized by and entered into standard dictionaries are not acceptable Scrabble words. If any of you play English Scrabble, you can't use these words. Okay, so um, I made a little list of um, some words that we use when people collect things. And like I said, some are difficult to pronounce and even I trip over the pronunciation of some of these words. So let's take it slow and look at these words and pronounce them the best we can. Okay, so a collector of shells is called a conchologist. A person that collects records is a discophile. Keychains, a copocli copocliphile. Umbrellas, a broliologist. Teddy bears, an arctophile. Keys, a cagophilist. Coins or banknotes is a numismatist. Maps, a cartomaniac. Stamps is a philatelist. Philatelist. Corkscrews is a helixophile. Postcards a deltiologist. Medals, badges, or pins is a phalerist. A person that collects cheese labels is a phromologist. Cigar bands, a brandophilist. Butterflies or moths is a Lepidopterist. A person that collects ties is a grabatologist. A person that collects beer bottle labels is a labologist. Fridge magnets, like me, is a memomagnetist. A memomagnetist. A person that collects pearls is a pernal. Pernologist, pernologist, very difficult. Somebody that collects bird eggs. I can't imagine collecting bird eggs, but some people do. And that person is called a oologist. A person that collects sand is a, an arenophile. A person that collects autographs is a philographist person that collects books, bibliophile, comic books, a panapictographist, 
panapictographist, flags, vexillophile, and little sugar packets that people steal from restaurants is called a sucrologist. Wow, I could have added a lot more um, names on this list, but I thought that was enough to get started. It's certainly impressive to know that all of these collectors have specific names. Let's move on. Doll collectors are called plangonologists and people have been making and collecting dolls since the beginning of time. Early dolls were made of clay, wood, cloth, whalebone, walrus tusk, cactus root, cottonwood, mammoth teeth, tin, paper, glass, and later porcelain, ceramic, latex, vinyl, and plastic. People that collect dolls do it for a variety of reasons. A woman may have a fond memory of a time when her beloved grandmother gave her a special and beautiful doll when she was a child, and this may have begun her interest in dolls and doll collecting. This may be the reason why she continues to search for that special and irreplaceable moment and that memory and bond with her grandmother that allows her to rediscover, relive and remember that happy moment of her childhood. Grown-ups remember that feeling of innocence and comfort and the reassurance and security in owning and holding their favorite dolls. They remember seeing their dolls as friends, companions, or confidants, and this brings them back to warm childhood memories. Now here is a picture of a little girl, a cherished childhood memory, holding her little doll in the air. What a lovely picture of a little girl and her doll. Other people find the craftsmanship, artistry and detail that goes into making dolls, including the hairstyles and texture, the clothing and shoes, and the detail and color of the eyes intriguing enough to begin collecting them. Now look at the beautiful craftsmanship of these beautiful dolls. Somebody has a nice collection of these dolls. Doll collectors can find dolls at antique shops, yard sales, and garage sales, estate sales, auctions, and of course, online. People collect all kinds of dolls, including modern, antique, or vintage. Porcelain dolls are also a favorite collectible item, as well as fashion dolls dressed in stunning, popular fashions, while others prefer to collect dolls from different cultures, including Japanese, African, Chinese, and Native American dolls. Now here's a lovely picture of some vintage dolls. A Japanese doll. and a beautiful fashion doll. Look at this doll's beautiful dress and style that she has. And look at that necklace, it's so nice. Wow. Okay, doll shows and exhibitions take place all around the world. There, collectors can meet, exchange ideas, share knowledge, display their treasures, make new friends, and buy, 
sell and trade their beautiful dolls. Some people like to collect toys or action figurines. For most of these collectors, toy collecting brings them back to a pleasant and happy time in their childhood. They may have had a special toy when they were young, and they may have special memories surrounding that toy. <clears throat> they may have started collecting toys as teenagers or as young adults because of a lack of toys in their childhood. Maybe their parents were not able to afford to purchase toys for them when they were young and they so much desired to have a particular toy that other children had and they absolutely could not have. Toy collectors say that they feel a sense of pride displaying and looking at their collections. They feel that toy collecting gives them something to concentrate and spend time on. And some say that it even reduces stress and loneliness. They love the challenge of trying to complete their collection, but they also really enjoy the recognition and admiration that they get from others that inevitably comes with owning such a magnificent and impressive collection. Now, here's a picture of an impressive toy and figurine collection. That is nice. Humans are not the only species to collect things. Pack rats and magpies also collect things and scientists and wildlife biologists don't really know why. Pack rats fill their nests with a multitude of objects and trinkets, including twigs, bones, bottle caps, buttons, marbles, shreds of clothing, paper, seeds, fruits and nuts, pieces of broken glass, shells, little plastic toys, and they especially like shiny objects such as lost or stolen rings, earrings, coins, and keys. Now this little guy, he's adding to his collection with a little nut that he just found. Pack rats are known to collect items from a 60 foot radius around their nests. And by studying these items, experts have been able to find treasure chests full of fascinating clues about civilizations from hundreds and even thousands of years ago. Magpies are also known to be collectors of shiny objects. Some researchers believe that magpies collect shiny objects to attract a mate, while others believe that they are attracted to shiny objects and reflective material just because they make, just because they mistake these items for food. I suppose the only one that knows why magpies collect these items is the magpie itself. Now here's a picture of a magpie with its lost or possibly stolen treasures. Basically, collecting gives people a sense of security, memories of childhood and innocence and joy, a purpose and a feeling of pride and completion. It is fun, competitive, challenging and rewarding. 
It is a great social activity that keeps people connecting with others, sharing ideas, knowledge, and information, and it is a great stress reliever and a form of relaxation. It gives people great pleasure, enjoyment, and recognition, and it can be a great investment in your financial future. So why not get started on your collection today? And that's it, your reading comprehension number three, the psychology of collecting. If you guys enjoyed that video, you can put a like on it. You can also subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below. If you're trying to improve your English and you want to do it quickly, you can get yourselves a copy of Basic English. This is the third edition published by McGraw-Hill and available everywhere, including Amazon, of course. If you guys get a copy of this book, I want you to start on the first page, complete every page right through to the end of the book. The answer key is at the back to support you while you are learning. This book will help you to improve your English a lot and quickly. If you guys are having difficulty with your verb tenses, <clears throat> you can get yourselves a copy of English verb tenses, also available on Amazon. If you guys get a copy of this book, same type of deal. You start on the first page, you complete every page right through to the end of the book. The answer key is at the back to support you while you are learning. Just to let you know, I have a Facebook page where I put lots of things up for you guys to help you learn more English. So you can check that out at um, Learn English with Julie Lachance. Um, also, there are many lessons on my YouTube channel, so you can flip through those, do the ones that you feel you need some help with, or better yet, do them all. For now, I'm going to wish you a pleasant evening, and I'm going to get ready to go to the pool and get some exercise. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Have a pleasant evening, and I will see you soon. Good night.